Welcome back once again to Jack's Tech Corner. I'm your host Jack and this is yet another video tutorial of how to use Photoshop Elements. Now a lot of you have been writing in and saying Jack what was those Windows uh, tutorials about? I just wanted to mix it up a little bit for those folks out there trying to load Windows 7 just to give you an understanding of how to install it and what you're going to be seeing uh, with post installation. But we're going to jump back on track here and do some more photo editing uh, with Photoshop Elements. So, as always, I just wanted to stop and uh, talk to you just briefly about my website, jackstechcorner.com. A lot of you complain out there about, Jack, why do you plug that website all the time? This, folks, is what helps to uh, bring these shows to you. It helps to pay for the website, uh, the, web, the web hosting fees that I have for the site. It, it also helps to purchase equipment and software uh, to continue to do the videos. So it's pretty important that I uh, put this out there to you. Just to show you uh, the website, jackstechcorner.com, there's a lot of DVDs. Um, people ask, Jack, how do you keep these things so inexpensive? Easily, I, I produce them myself. I uh, create the DVDs myself, do all my own packaging, and I do my own shipping. So if you keep everything in-house, you can keep it pretty economical for you to actually purchase it. We have Volume 1, 2, and 3. Uh, there's a three-volume set, which is the best bargain for your money is the three-volume set. And there's a Mac edition uh, for you Mac folks out there. This also contains iPhoto 09. So uh, make sure you have a look at this because, you know, iPhoto is out there. Uh, it's a great tool when you're using a Mac to do all your organizing in. Um, unless you like Bridge, which I did some videos on Bridge on the Mac too. So you can uh, take your pick. Uh, there's also a two-disc set. Maybe you just want to start with two discs. And if nothing else, folks, um, if you want to, drop a little donation in the donation bucket. It always helps out. So with that said, let's get rid of this and let's bring up our lesson for the day. The lesson today that we're going to be working with here is doing a water reflection. And this is, or you could do this with any picture you have. If you remember, I did a reflection a while back and we used a goat. We kind of mirrored the goat head to head. Uh, it's kind of an interesting look. You know, it's going to get a lot of people talking and saying, wow, how did you get that picture? Um, we actually created it in Photoshop Elements, so... It wasn't that difficult for us, but uh, nobody needs to know that. You say, hey, the goats are just uh, meeting at the fence, and I snapped the picture. Well, now we're going to take a, a normal picture uh, right here that we have, and we're going to create some reflection on this water down here. I thought this was an interesting tutorial because it gives you a little bit more depth to your picture, so it's well worth uh, seeing how this works. So we have this uh, shot. The first thing we have to do is we're going to have to Fit, the, fit it to screen, and then we're going to have to lower this down a little bit. So if you click right up here, click on your magnifying glass, the zoom tool, you get this new toolbar up here. Click the little pull down menu where it says 30%, and lower it down because we want to add to this picture. Now we can actually work on the picture. It's still all back here. This is all grayed out, so this is all pixels for this picture, but we're going to just shrink it down a little bit so we can work on it. The first thing you're going to need is your crop tool. So let's select the crop tool and we're going to just crop across the top of this picture just like this. All right. Now, once you have that selected, <clears throat> make sure at the bottom, well here, before we get that selected, make sure at the bottom down here you have the foreground and background both black. To do that, it normally looks like this, right? This is how yours normally looks. Just click on the black and you you bring up your foreground color picker. Click out the black. Click OK. Now we have them both black. Now let's go ahead and recrop this out. Just like this. Now folks, all you want to do is on this little handle down here, put your mouse over there and pull down. Give yourself some room. And then click the checkbox or hit your enter key. Either one will work. What you did now, you just filled that with black. You can see here in the background, it's filled with black. We added to the actual picture. We added some pixels down here. Now what you want to do is we're going to make a selection that we're going to use for our reflection. To do that, I used a marquee uh, tool here, marquee selection tool. Just go right across here, find out where about you want your reflection to start. I like to come up in the tree a little bit, in the tree line. And we don't want the black, we just want to go across there. Now that you have it selected, now we can copy that layer. We can copy our selection. So let's go up to layer. 
new layer via copy. We're going to copy that out. Now, as you see over here, now we just have that piece that we selected copied onto a new transparent layer right over here. With that done, what you want to do now is we want to flip that over so we can bring it down here and it'll be upside down with what's right here. So to do that, go to Image, Rotate. You don't want to flip vertical because you're going to flip the whole picture. We are working with the layer. Let's flip the layer vertical right here. You can see now we flipped the layer over. So now the boat's upside down, the trees are upside down. Hence, we're making our reflection. Click on your Move tool. It's the top tool on your toolbar. And let's just simply pull this down. And you're going to line it with that bottom. Just like that. So now you have your reflection. It looks like we actually, uh, the, the lake actually goes this way maybe, and then actually the water is increasing itself. So we actually have a reflection to that top right there now. Now you can, if you wish, to uh, lower the opacity a little bit because it shouldn't be as bright as your top. So we can actually click on the, the opacity and we can lower it down. You don't want to lower it too much because you're going to get that black back. All right? So you want to bring it up. I like to do it just when the line is coming back because you don't want that line showing there because it's going to look like you pasted it, right? Now let's click on the back here. Now you can see it's actually faded down a little bit from the top part here. It actually looks like there's a little bit of reflection going on down here. So that's a pretty uh, interesting uh, conversation piece. The last thing we're going to do is we're going to actually click the crop tool once again. And we're going to crop this back out. Let's go down just to the top of the black. Again, hit your enter key and you crop that out. You may use your move tool and you may want to move this up a little bit again. Just like so. Now if that line looks like it's black and any like that, I like to use the uh, blur tool. Here's the blur tool. And remember folks, if you move your mouse on here, there's these little things that come up. It's called helper text to tell you what the tool is. Click on that upper layer you can actually blur this together a little bit. You just want to blur that line out. Just get right across it. And you can see now we actually blurred them together. We blended them more or less together. Once you're done, go back up and then just go fit the screen. And there you go. You have a new picture. You can save that out as a JPEG. Uh, you can print that, send it off to your developer and uh, get it printed off. Hang it in a nice picture frame in your room and uh, you have a great conversation piece. Well, folks, I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video tutorial of creating a water reflection. You could really, like I say, do it in anything with buildings or anything. The effect itself kind of works better if you have a shot with some water in it, a lake, a river. Uh, it just makes it more interesting. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial. By all means, once again, check out my website, jackstechcorner.com. If you have any questions, email me, jackstechcorner at gmail.com. Thank you very much for watching this video tutorial. And I hope you join me in more of them later on. And if nothing else, support the show by subscribing. Uh, if you look at the number of subs uh, subscribers we have, we're almost at 3,000. So if you're not subscribed, click on that little button and get these shows as soon as they're produced. Thanks for watching. I'll see you back here next time. Until then, keep those cameras clicking. Keep the editors editing. I'll see you back here very soon. Bye for now.